Hi, this is the Philosophical Angle. Defining concepts in current media, and I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Nature of Aesthetics. These books are available free online for viewing at www.philosophypublishing.com. Along with me are my two panelists, Rick Samuelson. Rick graduated from Yale, has an MBA from uh, Wharton, uh, another master's from Tufts. He's retired from the investment banking industry and is currently in venture capital. Also with me is Mark Brennan. He's a professor at the Stern School of Finance at New York University. And he's also a, an editor for the London Quarterly Review. Welcome, Mark. Welcome, guys. The purpose of the philosophical angle is to examine the nature of the concepts and topics being used in current media and compare its essence with the usage and circumstances in, in how they are being used. This week, the subject of, the of our explication will be the consequences of the 2012 presidential election. So let's begin. First of all, there's a major problem here coming January 1st called the fiscal cliff. The problem with the fiscal cliff is that there are the expiration on January 1 of the Bush tax cuts. This will bring to the individuals uh, paying income tax a higher uh, bill will be pushed into a higher bracket, such as the formerly what was 10% will now be pushed into the 15% bracket. What was 28% or probably 25% will be pushed into 28%. What was 28 will be 31, 33 will be 36%, and today's high bracketed 36% will go to 39.6. But that's not all. Capital gains is going to go up from 15% to 18 to 20%, depending on the type of capital gains. Also, dividends will be now scored as individual income. And these dividends will be at the higher tax rates. Also with the fiscal cliff comes sequestration. This is the automatic spending cuts that have been previously agreed upon and will be put into place. These automatically cut the budget a certain percentage throughout the entire, through much of the federal budget. There are some areas which will not be touched by sequestration, such as Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. But one major factor that is being cut in the sequestration, in the automatic cuts that are, that are on its way, is the defense budget, which will take a, a big hit. Also on January 1, new taxes from the Obamacare law will start to be phased in. So the fiscal cliff really is the new taxes from Obamacare, the Bush tax cuts being expired, or that will expire, and fiscally the government will not be able to spend as much as it has in the past. <clears throat> the Republican stance on this is that they want lower taxes altogether. They do not want the Bush tax cuts 
to expire, but they want in a continuation. The Democrats, on the other hand, <coughs> want to raise rates for the higher uh, income brackets of 200,000 and above, 250,000 if for married couples. They say they want this in order to pay for the deficit. As we all know, deficits are in the news and certainly uh, because of the, the trillion dollar plus deficits that are accumulating each year. And the Democrats say that they need this in order to get that under control. But what happens if the Republicans resist? Let's say they do not agree with the Democrats in this lame duck Congress and, and they uh, resist the Bush, the, uh, the higher taxes for the higher income of 200,000 above. And that's one of their campaign pledges. So they are, uh, so that is part of their, uh, their stance. And if they, uh, they agree with the Democrats in, in raising taxes for this group, they break a, a campaign pledge. But the same is for the Democrats. They will break campaign pledges if they don't raise taxes on the wealthier tax-paying individuals in the United States of 200000 and above. So they want to. Uh, they want to say they want the need for the uh, the higher taxation because they want to pay for the deficit, and they want to cut spending, pay for uh, cut defense. But probably they wanted to spend more, and they need to pay for Obamacare. So there's a problem an ideological conflict. Both want to avoid breaking their campaign pledges. So most likely, what's going to happen will that nothing will happen between now and January 1st. Both sides will not be able to agree. It'll go into January. At that time, the Bush tax cuts will expire. Taxation will go up. That will lead to a possibility of a rapprochement, maybe, in January, where both sides can avoid their campaign pledges by compromising after the tax increase happens. I see a problem there, though. <clears throat> the Obama philosophy may intervene even here in January. Of course, he's got his Obamacare, and that will be hard to take off the table by the Republicans, in fact, impossible. So that's, that's for sure, and that's going forward. However, President Obama definitely would like a decrease in the prominence of the military in our society. He's a definitely an anti-colonialist and would like to see a worldwide reduction of military and arms throughout the world, not only the United States, I suspect. But he also wants to punish the successful. As a matter of fact, uh, off, uh, off script last week, he used the word before the election, revenge. In other words, he wants to tax the more successful as revenge, as a, as an idea for revenge. I don't know why, but that's th that's his word. Also, we have one more problem coming up. Shortly, the U.S. government will have to 
raise its debt ceiling if it wants to continue to be able to borrow. This will be an interesting standoff. The House of Representatives will have to raise the debt ceiling. And then that will you can get an interesting argument, a standoff for the debt ceiling versus taxes in the coming debate in December and January. So we've kind of laid the ground here, so let's go to our panel and see what uh, their thoughts are for the coming two months in the problem of the fiscal cliff. Mark, let's start with you. Any response? Uh, to what? That we have a fiscal cliff? Not so much that we have a fiscal cliff, but are there any strategies out there that will be forthcoming that will be able to solve the problem of the fiscal cliff as of January 1? I think if we take out your uh, phrase, that will be forthcoming, then we can answer the question. Because nothing will be forthcoming. We're just going to have some cop out of the last minute. But I thought of a solution the other night, which I'd love to input. Uh, it would be pick a number, you know, one, two, five, ten, whatever percent you want. That will be the percent that taxes go up and that spending will be cut across the board. So say we pick 10%. Everybody's taxes go up 